This picture, which is entitled Autumn in Snowdonia, was posted by one of our Image Forum members. Jeff really liked it, and uh, Jeff was kind enough to send me through the original of the picture. So what I thought is just take a look at and see how we can actually go about correcting this image, which is going to be removing the colour cast. We're going to bring out as much detail as possible around these areas here, darken down the sky a little bit before finishing off. OK, to make a start, I'm going to keep this layer intact, so we're going to use Command-J or Control-J on a PC to duplicate the background layer. Now, one of my favourite methods for removing the colour cast, I really like this, is to go to the Image, Adjustment, simply drop down to Match Colour. Now, when the Match Colour dialog box opens, all you need to do is click on Neutralise, watch what happens to the image, pow, through it comes. Now, the next stage is just moving the... Uh, palette there to the side a little bit, we're going to bring the fade slider in and it's the amount that we can bring this in which is incredible, you can take it right back to the original let's just drop it down, we're going to come to something round about that area there, that looks pretty good, if I just switch the preview on and off there's the before, there's the after, we're going to click OK to that right, coming to layer 1, what we're going to do with this is I'm going to right click on the layer itself and we're going to drop down and we're going to choose Convert to Smart Object. Don't worry if you're not using Photoshop uh, CS3 or CS4, you can continue working. It's just, I like to convert this to a smart object because for the next stage, which is Image, Adjustment, we're going to drop down to Shadow and Highlights. It's going to add it as a smart filter, which means we'll be able to come back in and adjust it. And you can see, now it's opened. Let's just have a quick look. I've got the Show More Option dialog box ticked, and if we just have a look, there's the before, there's the after, so it's incredible the amount of detail we can actually get out of this picture. And if we drop down the Show More Options, it just gives us the ability now to be able to come in, we can reduce the shadow down, because I want to keep it, and really, when you look at a picture like this, you've got to look for the clues. We've got one little blue patch here, you can see sunlight coming over the ridges here, this area is bathed in sunshine. So you want to try and retain that with the pictures, and by dropping this down, just looking at the, sh the shadow detail there, just playing with the sliders, I haven't got a clue what the figures are saying, but just use the sliders, watch the image, forget the numbers, and just see what happens with the picture. Moving down to the highlights, I had to look then to see the better put my cursor, but that will do nicely. Right, coming down, we're going to come to the tonal widths on the highlights, again just moving it back and forth, and I'm looking at particular in these areas here, that sunlight coming across there, brilliant. Right, coming across with this, yep, let's just pop back up to this one a second, that looks pretty good. Colour correction, plus 20, default. Let's take it back. I'm going to go back with this. I'm not going to use the default. I'm going to drop it below the default. That sort of area there, just looking at the colours in general, particularly around this part. That looks better. What have we got? We have got plus 9. Midtone contrast. Let's just pump it up a little bit. Let's have a look. Before, after. I think we'll go with the after. Click OK to that. In it pops as a smart filter. Now with this, we've got the ability to be able to click on it to come in and to make any further adjustments and that's why I like using the smart filters or smart objects which is what they are. Right, for the next stage let's take a look at darkening down the sky. Now before we do anything just press D on the keyboard to give us the default colours. We're now going to go to effects. We're going to drop down to gradient overlay. Clicking on gradient overlay we get that which doesn't look particularly good. Clicking on reverse so we've now got the black at the top, we're going to click in the gradient window which opens the gradient editor and we're going to click on the black to transparent. Click OK to that. Bringing the cursor out, it's the move tool, we're going to click down just lift up that dark area so you can see we can affect the amount that we're actually bringing this in to so that sort of pick, sort of point even, not pick but point. We'll do it nicely, changing the blend mode to soft lights. Dropping the opacity down a little bit just a touch or two, and again, if I just bring this down, let's have a look at the preview, there's the before, there's the after, and again, we can just pull this down, and it's just highlighting the lighting coming across the tops of these uh, mountains, as we call them in Wales, or hills probably anywhere else, but that'll do nicely. Click OK to that. Right, we can fold this up, keep it neat and tidily out of the way. The next stage is go to the adjustment layers, 
we're going to drop down it's going to be off the screen but I'm choosing selective color this brings up the selective color dialog box now we're going to come down and we're going to choose cyan now this means we're working in this particular color area here and if we come to the cyan slider if we move it around you can see the difference it makes to the color of that cyan I'm going to take it into the minus I just want to darken it down a little bit like that so going into minus 16 now coming to the black slider don't forget we're still working with cyan and I'm just going to drop that down a little bit to the minus 15 I just want to take a little bit of the sting out of the blue right let's come and take a look at yellow there's a lot of yellows in this image and if we just move the slider here you can see the way we can affect those again I just want to pull that back just ever so slightly like that and let's just play with the black slider there and again you can see the difference and it, you can see it's just enhancing like the lighting in the picture don't be afraid to sort of move it back and forth a bit rapidly and it allows you just to be able to see the various tones you're working with and just pulling it back a little bit like that right we're now going to select white the reason for white is we're actually going to black but if we do this look what we can do to the clouds we can sort of pump up the volume on the clouds it's a great way of just being able to sort of highlight those clouds a little bit you can see the way you can just careful though not to blow any detail with it so it's only a small amount just to brighten them up a little bit and we can even go to neutrals and with the neutrals you can see the way we can just add a little bit more bite job done if it's just a quick look there's the before there's the after you can see it's a very subtle but it just adds nicely to the image you can even come and select something like red and with the red let's just take a look and you can see there's the area there are the heathers you can see the way you can sort of pump up the volume on that or just bring it back a touch or two that looks pretty good great stuff right let's take a look here's the story so far let's just run through that's what we started off with so we've gone from that to this We've got the smart filter there, the smart object with the shadow and highlights. We've got the gradient overlay making up for the uh, the area of the sky. You see how just darkening down that area helps to bring up the lighting in the rest of the picture. And finally adding up with the a little bit of the selective color there to finish the image off. So there it is. Go on, give it a try. This tends to be a workflow that I use with the vast amount of my images and it really does work a treat. Until the next time, happy imaging and take care.